In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. Before we begin our Holy Mass, I'd like to offer my condolences to all the family on the very, very tragic loss of Claire, a daughter, a mother, an auntie, a sister, a person who was a great friend to so many people here in Laytown and Betty Town. And before we begin the Holy Mass, I'd like to start by blessing or asking one of the family to bless again the coffin. She was a great blessing to all of the family. And um, uh, John will return that blessing on our behalf. All of you are carrying the cross of your loss, and it is very much represented by Christ on the cross who suffered and died for all of us. But there are two sides of the cross. There's the side which depicts the suffering of Christ. But on the other side, you have the empty cross, the sign of the risen Christ, the sign of hope for all of us because Christ has risen from the dead and we all go back to the risen Christ. We too will be raised to new life. So one of the family will now place the crucifix on the coffin. Here we have a copy of the Word of God. The Word of God is that which has promised that we too, being all the children of God, that we too will show through our faith that we are loved by him. The Word of God is our Word too. It is given to us. We ask through the Word of God that he will always give us all we need during these sad times. We will place the Gospels on the coffin. As we prepare ourselves now to celebrate this Holy Mass, we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, and as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened, so may our hope of resurrection for your departed servants also find new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So now Anne is going to do the first reading for us. Anne, come. reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. Their leaving like an annihilation. But they are in peace. If they experience punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction, great will their blessings be. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. For grace and mercy await those he has chosen. The word of the Lord.
and Alad will now do the second reading for us. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is a season for everything, a time for every occupation under heaven, a time for giving birth, a time for dying, a time for planting, a time for uprooting what has been planted, a time for killing, a time for healing, a time for knocking down, a time for building, a time for tears, a time for laughter, a time for mourning, a time for dancing, a time for throwing stones away, a time for gathering them up, a time for embracing, a time to refrain from embracing, a time for searching, a time for losing, a time for keeping, a time for throwing away, a time for tearing, a time for sowing, a time for keeping silent, a time for speaking, a time for loving, a time for hating, a time for war, a time for peace. The word of the law. Gospel of St. Luke. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On the first day of the week, two of the disciples were on their way to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking together about all that had happened. Now as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side, but something prevented them from recognizing him. When they drew near to the village in which they were going, he made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them. It is nearly evening, they said, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Now while he was with them at table, he took the bread, said a blessing, then he broke it and handed it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognised him, but he had vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven assembled together with their companions, who said to them, Yes, it is true, the Lord has risen, as he has appeared to Simon. Then they said, then they told the story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognized him at the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit again. And once again, we express our deepest condolence to the family of Claire, to her husband Paul, her children Mark and Emma, their si her siblings Elaine. Kevin, David and Patricia, or mum Annie. A time like this is very, very difficult for all concerned. For a woman like Claire to have been taken so suddenly asks more questions than there are answers to. 
I was speaking to Claire's mum and what I heard about Claire was that she was funny, she was caring. She did very, very well in her job as a manager for a waste disposal company. She was a great lover of life, her family, a girl who liked to party in the garden with her own bar, a girl who loved her visitors and a glass of Merlot. And she lived the last 10 of your life, years of her life here in Bethlestown in Leytown, where she and Paul were so very happy. She was the organiser of the family and loved her summer vacations in Cavan with her family. She had a funny sense of humour, which some would say she got from her late dad, Tony. The scene from the Gospel today of the two disciples of Christ on the road to Amos in part sums up the reactions of all of us on the death of someone that we love so dearly. These two disciples were walking along the road, desolate at thinking of the death of Jesus in the same way that anyone grieves at the unexpected loss of someone they love so dearly. These disciples felt that their world was at an end, so much so that they could not even recognise the person they had loved so much and whom they had followed for probably three years. Their depth was so, so heavy. We too will find it difficult to remember these days at a future time. But what we will remember is what is in our hearts, what we know about Claire as a person, her relationship, her unique relationship with each and every one of you. A part of you went to God with Claire. And a part of Claire remains here with you, inside of your own hearts. It is hard, it is very hard, as it was for those two disciples. In the end, they recognised Christ in the breaking of bread. And the symbol of breaking of bread means so much more than just the simple sharing of a meal. Back in the day, the days of the hippies, they would use expressions like, hey man, let's break bread. But it meant more than sharing a meal. It meant being there for each other. It meant sharing together in something which was important. For the next few days, you too would share with each other, be there for each other. This is a time for family, for helping each other through these days. And that is what it means to be Christ-like. We were all formed into the body of Christ and therefore we are as Christ. And being as Christ, we hold each other together. We love each other and we remember that this is a time for unity, for watching after each other. The disciples had left the tomb, but the two women that went to the tomb, when they got there, they found that he was not there. He was gone. 
the angel said to the women, why look in a place like this for someone who is alive? He is not dead, he is risen. Here we have the remains of Claire. But we shouldn't think of her as being the remains. Claire is not here. Claire has gone back to the God who gave her life. Yes, we will bury the remains, we respect the remains, but we keep in mind, and it's very important, she has gone back to God. Today is the Feast of All Souls, a very, very important feast in the church because it reminds us that all of us, each and every one of us, are the children of God. And that God never, ever, ever stops loving us. And so we will pray for her and we will pray to her. We will ask her to intercede with God, to look after us, to care for us, to grant that we will be able to hold the memories that we have, which are precious, in our own relationship with her. As a mom, as a sister, as a daughter, as a good friend, whatever your relationship was, it is precious. And you will hold on to that. And you will remember that now she can do more for you than you can for her. May God bless and protect her and keep her ever amongst all the angels in heaven. Amen. We're now going to say a few prayers for Claire and we're going to have Emma, Elaine, Finnan and Rainey to come and read the prayers for us. Pray for my mom, Claire. Help us all to keep her love alive in our daily lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray in thanks for all the blessings that came to so many people through the life of Claire. May she now also receive all God's blessings for eternity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of all consolation, help us, Claire's family and friends, to comfort each other. Claire now joins her dad, Tony, her nannies, Vera and Patricia, her granddads, Michael and Tony, for eternity. Rest in peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember with gratitude the nurses and doctors of the Lord's Hospital A&E and ICU departments. And we remember the ambulance services for all the care and attention they gave to Claire and her family. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously God, our loving Father, you are the giver of life, you are the giver of all that is good. We ask you to grant that Claire will be together with you and the angels forever in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. So now we're going to bring up gifts which represent Claire's life. Kevin is going to bring up together with David, Luke and Mia.
let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from our hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look favorably upon our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servants may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone, he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man, he chose to die, so that in your sight, we might all live forever. And so with company of of all the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Amen, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Claire, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever and ever. So we call upon God our Father in the words our Saviour gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The prayer for peace. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. If anybody would like to receive Holy Communion, if they stand up, well, then we will know who we will give communion to. If you rather not receive Holy Communion, you may remain seated.
Me and you now come to Madrid, a spiritual uh, home relating to uh, one of the gospel passages. Imagine, imagine stepping onto a shore and finding it heaven. Imagine taking hold of a hand and finding it God's hand. Imagine breathing new air and finding it celestial air. Imagine feeling invigorated and finding it immortality. Imagine passing from storm and tempest to an unknown calm. Imagine walking and finding it home. So before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness, strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Now going to bless the coffin and we're going to incense it, the blessing with the holy water, the last blessing here in the church, and then incensing a symbol of our belief that all our prayers raise up, just like that incense, to God. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid, hasten to meet her angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive our soul and present her to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Claire in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Claire in this life they are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us, listen to our prayers, open the gates of paradise to your servant, and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. Amen. In peace, let us now take our sister to her place of rest. <laughs>